Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the country's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got the most popular man on TV. I don't think anybody's done more hours on the telly in the last year than Philip Schofield. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And if it was flying hours, like on a plane, I think I would definitely have my licence by now. Do you know what it is? You're living the dream, really. You're credible as a journalist. You go on that this morning and you do the business with the proper news. And then in a heartbeat, you can turn it around and have fun. There are so few people master that. And that, I think, is your greatest skill, isn't it? Well, it's, um, I think, half of it. When I first wanted to be in telly and on the radio in the first place, um, the advice I always got was be yourself. And I think because because I'm genuinely interested in the things that we do, um, and I'm working with Holly, uh, and we have a sense of humour that works at the same speed. Um, you know, all of those sort of things contribute to the fact that you can you can actually move very quickly. We have a skilled team as well. That the, the um, we when I first started at, at this morning. You could. Uh, it, it, there were awkward gear changes, um, mm. and so uh, so we develop those now. Uh, we mark them up properly for everyone to know when when they're coming, um, and we separate them with a competition or with a commercial break or things like that. So it just it, it's like flipping the pages of a magazine. It just makes it easier to get from serious to jokey. How often do you find yourself on the naughty mat in the editor's office? Because it does sometimes go off the rails where you're just having so much fun, which of course are the moments we love and that end up going viral and getting 20 billion hits. Yeah, never once. Never once. (laughs) There's never been a moment where Holly and I have been hauled in and said, you shouldn't have laughed at that or that was a bit of, you know, it just, it just, it's not like that. We both know how far we can go. Mm. Um, I mean, there is definitely that feeling of laughing in church, which is a bit, which, you know, once it starts and you think, oh, my God, not now. Mm. Um, and I'm one or other of us will attempt to scrabble it back and, and, uh, and sort ourselves out. But, it, but, um, but no, we've never, we've never been hauled into the editor's office for laughing. <laughs> You're going to be on tour uh, this spring. The Knights of Music is coming to Nottingham, Edinburgh, uh, Newcastle and finishing up at London's new Wimbledon Theatre on the 30th of April. It starts on the 27th. We're going to talk about that in a moment. The synergy and connection between you two is extraordinary and it didn't necessarily have to work. I mean, she's young and glamorous and you're an old cock that's been doing it for 35 years and, and mastered your art. I mean, it very quickly seemed to work. Was there a point when you thought, ah, this is going to probably probably be the rest of my career on telly with a lady who makes it look so effortless um it, it, everything all these things work um very organically holly had done dancing on ice we got on really well mm. uh fern had decided she didn't want to do this morning anymore so uh holly was my only choice i knew immediately that it was holly that i wanted to do it and i said you know actually if holly doesn't do it then I might have to think about what I do so I sort of threatened and um and Holly got the gig I knew it would be great and I knew she'd work perfectly um and uh, and so and, and and you get the opportunity I'm very lucky my career's very varied you you have moments where you're working with another presenter and you have moments when you're on your own I mean I I, I Holly and and me definitely the double act on this morning and that works brilliantly but the same thing we then go off and do our separate things i've got five gold rings you know we've, we've, the, 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 all the other shows that you do mr and mrs the cube you know that sort of stuff then you go off and do your own thing and we just meet up in the mornings or very occasionally on a thursday or a friday evening <laughs> i used to do warm up on loose women for a while and the one thing that the girls used to tell me was that feeling of going back to the phone after the show and seeing the storm that had been created by the papers or social media does it ever become normal when you say something Something off the cuff and the next minute it's front page news because that is so extraordinary and there's only probably 10 or 20 people in the entire country who they care enough about to report it well it depends what it is really i mean all, all i ever you know all you ever want is accuracy mm. really um i mean i internet uh, I, I suppose twitter is less fun than it used to be because now everybody just complains on twitter mm. uh, so so i play with that slightly less than perhaps I, I did in the past but as far as you know that's concerned we, we're all we're all in the same game i know that the mail online and the mirror online and you know that it's a machine it's a it's a it's a beast that has to be fed mm. and so if they're mentioning us then that's great that's fantastic and uh, and we're perfectly happy with that um and so you know if there is a storm of some sort 
um, you would hope that it was, you know, a, a sensible one, um, mm. and uh, and that you know the, the the reason your phone was lit up at the end of uh, at the end of a show was um, was something that you knew either you knew you'd done or for something you know sensible. And and the thing is, it, it is such a beast that if you if you don't if you don't feed it, I mean, we don't, we never ever would do it purposely. Um, you, um, you you know, they, they end up making stuff up anyway because we haven't been on for a couple of days. <laughs> yes. so. As this week proves, one of you takes a day's holiday and it's suddenly front page news. It's extraordinary. Well, Holly was sick, actually. She was off She was off sick uh, and there's been a bug in her family all weekend. It had gone mm. round the kids and it had gone round Dan and everyone had, had it. Holly got it twice and she got it on the sort of Sunday night. And, mm. um, and of course, the thing with Holly is that the minute she's off poorly, everyone says she's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's always the story there. The, the, you know, if if, uh, if she doesn't have a, if we do a, a, an item uh, and we're doing drinks and it's a drink that she doesn't particularly mm. like and she doesn't have any, oh she must be pregnant. Uh, she's off a cu- couple of days sick. Oh she must be pregnant. Drives her mad. Yeah. It's amazing as well how this morning is pushing the media forward. I know that sounds hard to do in 2017, but there are things you still do on there that still shock people and surprise people. I think that's the reason it stays so fresh, isn't it? You never sort of get lazy and it never becomes predictable. I hope not. I hope not. We don't go out ever go out to you know to to shock uh, and to be sensational. I mean, I, mm. we don't we, we we cover stories that we would hope would fascinate the audience. We're very aware of the audience that we've got. We know what they like. Um, mm. We know what doesn't turn them on. Um, and you go through stages. You go through editors. You know, we've had a we had an editor who very much liked the the, the stories that um, with the, the lady with the biggest boobs and the man with the longest willy. You know, we we mm. we've sort of gone through that sort of thing. The one the editor we've got now is the best we've ever had um, and I think he's got his finger more on the pulse of what our viewers like um, and uh, and he's a bit maverick which is fantastic uh, and uh, and he's a bit experimental which is terrific and he mm. looks at new twists on things so we, we are I think the best team we've been and that's across daytime actually that goes right the way through to the head of daytime who's Helen Warner right through our bosses um everyone everyone and it's this wonderful alignment of planets that we're all singing from the same hymn sheet which is why I think the show is doing so well why didn't you ask me on you know when you did that show about micro penises I was waiting for the phone to ring Philip nothing (laughs) not a call nothing It's a long list. <laughs> I should call it a short list, really. <laughs> At least I wasn't on the top of it. The nicer music is touring the UK this spring from the 27th of April, and uh, I can't wait to see it. It seems to me one of the reasons that you are so good at what you do is because you, and I mean this as a compliment, you're old school. You're a variety entertainer that's come through the theatre that always wanted to do radio and TV, and that puts you in great stead today. But then you're going back to the theatre. I wonder whether there's some something secretly inside you that makes you want to be a giraffe in the Lion King or a green witch in Wicked. What, and, and do it and I would know. Well, exactly. Yeah, just put a bit of makeup on and uh, sneak in there after this morning and there you are, eight times a week back no, in the West End. It would be, it would be fun. Uh, certainly it would, that would be fun to do. Uh, but um, but I, the, the, the thing with me and theatre... Um, uh, and you mentioned the radio and the telly. The radio, I always wanted to be in the radio first. I couldn't get into radio, so I uh, answered a, a, an ad in the newspaper and got a job on the telly. That happened. Then the radio came after it. And then, bizarrely, the theatre came out of absolutely left field. And I had no clue that was coming. Did it, found out that I could do it. And, and you say, you know, the, the sort of old school variety, I can't dance to save my life, so I'm a rubbish dancer. If I was a really, really good dancer, I, I probably would have been a major threat in the West End but because I can't dance I, mm. I, everyone's safe but as far as singing and, uh, and, and you know, acting and enjoying enjoying a live audience is concerned when I got on the stage at the London Palladium it definitely lit some sort of a fire and I realised that I absolutely loved it but the trouble is that if you're going to do eight shows a week then that is total commitment you yeah. have to do that. You can't do anything else. It has to be that. Um, and so when uh, you know when I, when I was doing the the, the theatre, I wasn't on the telly. I had no telly presence at all, uh, and that got a bit scary. And actually, funnily enough, it was quite hard to get back into it again mm. afterwards. And I thought I'm not going to do that again. And which means that my my time on stage, my appearances on stage are incredibly rare. Um, and so that's what makes this the night so so much fun is that I know that these are about... It's, a, it's a, the most exclusive thing that I do. We did four shows last year, 
uh, around the country and they were massive and we were really stunned by the the reaction and people up in their seats i mean the music's so good and the the band are brilliant we've got west end performers singing the best songs from knighted people lords dames um and then you know and then my mate said you want to host it and then he gave me another pint and i agreed to sing um and but i can only do four nights and uh, and 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 what's more four nights per year and next year is really busy, so I don't know whether it'll even fit again. So, you know, it's that, it's that sort of rare. So I'm determined to have a bloody good time when I go out and do it. It's interesting timing. You're coming to Nottingham on the 27th of April, which is my hometown. I'll see you there. I don't know whether you're aware, but Joseph is in the theatre next to it, which is connected. Is there any chance of a duet with Joe McEldry? Maybe you could close your you eyes know, together. Joe came on this morning uh, <laughs> a, a few weeks ago, and we began to... Oh, I don't know whether logistically it's even remotely possible. Mm. We, we began to hatch a plot that he would appear in mine and I would appear in his. I have no clue whether it would work. <laughs> Bearing in mind it's much much easier for Joe to drift across to us and randomly appear. Yeah. You cannot have Philip Schofield randomly appearing in a, in a professional production of, of Joseph. Um, not unless I came around as Jacob. I mean, it just it, it, it wouldn't. It, it, and tell me, I'll tell you how much that hurts these days. But um, but it was. Um, it, 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 I, I think it would work for him. I just don't know whether it would work for us. I'd go on a bow at the end. <laughs> Well, take the glory. Don't blame you. Yeah, absolutely. I'll go. I'll go on and bow, and uh, and Joe can sing in our crowd. So I'll get all his glory, and all I need to do in his show is bow. I remember seeing you when I was much younger. I think I must have been four or five when you were doing Joseph. And my favourite bit of that show, if I remember, was the blow up sheep. That stayed with me. I don't know why. Yeah, well, the funny enough, the West End show they were uh, they were they were proper proper sheep with proper wool on them. Ours, it was only it was only the touring version that had uh, had blow up ones. I mean, on on, uh, on the on the Palladium stage, they were uh, they were very very nearly real sheep. Mm. What's it like being you? I mean, there's two sides to that. One, the sex symbol. Let's address that first. You do know that the ladies and a few of the men as well find you delicious. You know this, don't you, Philip? Well, I mean, it's uh, it's enormously flattering, and I will. Never, I would never be uh, anything other than very happy about that. It's not a bad thing. I mean, I'm a deeply unattractive man. And then, of course, on the other end of that, there's the popularity of success. And there are so few people, Anton Deck, maybe Dermot, uh, you, Simon Cowell, there are so few people who seem to be absolutely safe. I know it can turn around in a heartbeat. I guess for you, this must be such a great time in your life, as well when we consider your, your private life. You've got the family that's there, you're traveling the world with your wife, the daughters it's perfect isn't it yeah i mean it's it is fantastic uh, um and the same you know with any family you have the occasional trauma uh, here and there and you know a, a year or so ago my brother was incredibly poorly and mm. you know so we all have our ups and downs everyone you know as a family there's nothing there's nothing unusual about our family we all get to everyone gets together so occasionally someone will kick off you know i mean it's it's just the same as everybody else i'm but but as far as the job is concerned, I never um, never forget how lucky I am. But at the same time, when people say, "Oh my God, you have it so easy," I you know was very much aware that, that I wanted to do this from the age of ten. I've shown a bit of commitment to it. Uh, finally, got employed at seventeen because the BBC was sick of the letters that I was writing job <laughs> applications. I had to type them so they couldn't tell how old I was. Um, and then at seventeen, I lived in London in a bedsit on my own with absolutely zero money so I've done all that um, and so you know gradually and then it began to work and then it got a little bit better and then it got a bit better it's been you know it's been a long haul so mm. when I sit here where I am now yeah I'm, I'm I never forget how lucky I am but at the same time I don't feel guilty about it because I because you know as with anything in life and my dad always said to me you know, he said, if you're going to be, whatever you're going to do, he said to my brother as well, whatever you're going to do, just be the best at it. If you're going to yeah. be a cab driver, just be the best cab driver. Mm. If you're going to sell ice cream, be the best at selling ice cream. Um, and that was, you know, that was really a little bit of something instilled in, in, in both of us, really. And it didn't happen by accident, that thing about 10,000 hours. I mean, you'd done that by the age of 20, hadn't you? You sat there at home and knew what you wanted to be and just practiced and practiced. Well, I had done I'd done about a thousand hours before I ever got employed from the telly anyway, because I, you know, I used to walk around the house with a, a cardboard box on top of a tea trolley, pretending it was a camera, um, and my, and, a, and a and a very old microphone hanging off my dad's fishing rod, and that was my boom. You know, I, my, my brother's my brother's first words were no comment. I'm pretty damn sure about that. <laughs> 
<laughs> and have you ever analysed what it is that you do that the others don't do, which is the reason you get employed, or is that to up your own backside? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't ever say that. I just know. I know that you know that that, that I would. I am considered a safe pair of hands, and I, I'm, mm. I'm assuming that's a good thing. But um, but, but I, I think that's definitely you know sort of one of those things that it's nice to be considered, and that's the same with and Tech. It's the same with Holly. It's the same with Derma. You know, you you, you know, th- there is this there is this group of us who hopefully you would you know like to include yourself in that you know was a was a, a reasonably safe pair of telly hands. I think it's more than that though. It's the charm it's the fact that you don't seem to take yourself too seriously you can laugh one minute and be serious the next and that is an incredible skill that so few have as I hugged Sarah Green yesterday we both said to each other still getting away with it yeah and that's all you can do Nights of Music is touring the UK from the 27th of April you can see Philip Schofield on tour do we get to see you sing this is the elephant in the room that everybody's waiting for do you do a bit at the end yes very good we can't wait to see that more than a bit I do two bits Oh, two bit. We. I'm guessing one of them involves a multicolored frock. Uh, you, could, you, could be, you could be right. You're on the right track. Talking of which, is there any amount of money that could tempt you to do pantomime? I mean, the Palladium's at it again this year. They need a start. Could you take six weeks out, three weeks out to do that, or no? I've just been asked to do one, and uh, and the, and the uh, unfortunately the Christmas schedule um, is a nightmare. It just doesn't work. Once again, it's same old same old story. No dick in December for Philip. That's what we're <laughs> confirming on the program. Any chance of dancing on ice coming back? We love that. Uh, the, once again, there is, there is a reasonable possibility. Very, <laughs> you better get your skates on. You've got a lot to do. I don't think there's anybody uh, more busy or more popular in show business than Philip Schofield. You can see him on tour with the Knights of Music, Nottingham, 27th of April, Edinburgh, 28th, Newcastle on the 29th, finishing at the new Wimbledon Theatre on the 30th in London. Philip, it's a great honour. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, mate.